Um, all right. So open up page 58. We're going to get started reading today. Um, and like I said, things are going to get real saucy. Real fancy. So mid, mid page 58, um, after Giles, Corey says something. All right. That's, and that's the whole point is, you, when John Proctor like busts into the courtroom, he's like, I'm going to free my wife. I'm going to free my friend's wives. We're going to like kick butt. Take them. I'm getting everybody out of here. And it like goes terribly wrong. <laughs> Yeah, Nick, you're, just, you're kind of awful. Like, you're poor wife. She you're really bad at being a husband. Okay. You on your wife, and then you can't mm -hmm. get her out of jail. Correct. Although, congratulations, you're going to have another kid. Let's go. Oh. Wait, that's actually so cool. I'm having Yeah, like, she's legit. It's legit. Sorry. Wait, am I having the kid, or is Allie having the kid? You're having the kid. Allie didn't get knocked out. Allie didn't get pregnant. Right <laughs> All the baby mamas. All right. So, um, Giles Corey. So, where we ended off is Giles Corey, like, basically comes into the courtroom and is like, I overheard somebody who told me, or somebody told me that they overheard that Thomas Putnam asked his daughter to accuse their neighbor, the, the, the Putnam's neighbor, of being a witch so that he can buy their land because nobody in town can afford it, but he can and give him 600 acres. Okay. And he's like, and they bring Thomas Putnam in and they're like, he says you did this. And Thomas Putnam's all like, it's a lie. And they're like, what do you have to say to that? And he's like, well, Thomas Putnam is also lying. And they're like, well, you need evidence. And, and so Corey's like, well, I can't. I give you the evidence because you just arrested 91 people for signing a deposition that said that the wives were good. Um, I'm not going to like turn in my friend. And they're like, okay, well, we'll arrest you. And he's like, okay, that's fine. Because Giles Corey ain't no snitch. And he is, he is not going to die a snitch. So um, he gets arrested, and that is where we left off. Um, he attacks Putnam, and they arrest him. And Proctor says, um, Proctor, he puts, no, no, no. Yes, we're on page 58, about halfway down. Oh. Like, so we're starting with Proctor reading that long one? Yeah. OK. I was right here. Oh, Proctor sorry. put Giles on bench one. Peace, Giles, peace. We'll prove ourselves now, we will. So, Proctor, when you're ready. All right. Peace, Giles, peace. We'll prove ourselves. Now we will. Say nothing more, John. He's only playing you. He means to hate us all. This is a court of law, mister. I'll have no affrontery. Affrontery here. Mm -hmm. uh, Proctor. Forgive, forgive him, sir, for his old age. Peace, Giles. We'll prove it all now. You cannot weep, Mary. Remember the angel what he said to the boy. Hold to it. Now there's your rod. This is Mary Ward's deposition. I, I would ask you remember, sir, while you read it, that until two weeks ago, she were no different than the other children are today. Mm -hmm. You saw her scream. She howled. She swore familiar spirits choked her. She even testified that Satan, in the form of woman, now in jail, tried to win her soul away, and then when she refused. We know all this. I sir. She swears now that she never saw Satan, nor any spirit, vague or clear, that Satan may have sent to hurt her, and she declares her friends are lying now. Excellency, a moment. I think this goes to the heart of the matter, sir. It surely does. I cannot say he is an honest man. I know him little, but in all justice, sir, a claim so weighty cannot be argued by a farmer. In God's name, sir, stop here. Send him home and let him come again with a lawyer. Now look you, Mr. Hale. Excellency, I have signed 72 death warrants. I am a minister of the Lord, and I dare not take a life without there be a proof. So... Immaculate. Immaculate. No slightest qualm of conscience may doubt it. Mr. Hale, you surely do not doubt my justice. I have this morning signed away the soul of Rebecca Nurse, Your Honor. I, I not conceal it. I tell you truth, sir. My hand shakes yet as with a wound. I pray you, sir, this argument let lawyers present to you. Mr. Hale, believe me, for a man of such terrible learning, you are most bewildered. Mm -hmm. I hope you will forgive me. 
I have been 32 years a bar, sir, and I should be confounded where I call upon too many people. But you consider now, and I bid you all do likewise. In an ordinary crime, how does one defend the accused? One calls upon witnesses to prove his innocence, but witchcraft is ipso facto. Ipso facto, on its face and by its nature, an invisible crime. Therefore, who may possibly be witness to it? The witch and the victim, none other. Now we cannot help the witch to accuse herself of granted. Therefore, we must rely upon her victims, and they do testify. The children certainly do testify. As for the witches, none will deny that we are most eager for their confessions. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what is left for our lawyers to bring out? I think I've made my point. Have I not? But this child claims the girls are not truthful, and if they are not... That is precisely what I'm about to consider, sir. What more may you ask of me, unless you doubt my... Probity. Mm -hmm. I surely do not, sir. Let you consider it then. And let you put your heart to rest. The deposition, Mr. Foster. I should like to question. Mr. Paris, I bid you be silent. Sit you down, Mrs. Foster. You sit there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Cheever, will you go into the court and bring the children here? Mary Ward, how came you to this turnabout? Has Mr. Proctor threatened you for this deposition? No, sir. Has he ever threatened you? No, sir. Has he threatened you? No, sir. Then you tell me that you sat in my court, policy line, and gave you that complaint of the by your evidence? Answer me. I did, sir. How were you instructed in your life? Do you not know that God damns all liars? Or is it now that you lie? No, sir. I am with God now. You are with God now. Aye, sir. I will tell you this. You are either lying now or you are lying in the court. In either case, you have committed perjury, perjury which is to lie under oath. Oh. Perjury, and you will go to jail for it. You cannot lightly say you lie to me. Do you know that? I cannot lie no more. I am with God. I am with God. Ruth Putnam, not in court, sir, nor the others. So, okay, so as I've stated before, and I'll see it again, there's nothing more terrifying to a teenage girl than a pack of teenage girls. And poor Mary Warren is going to be confronted by a pack of teenage girls. All right? I mean, can any of my girls in the room testify to this? There's, oh, it depends so who the girl is. No, it's scary. Yeah. I think it's. I, I would agree. It depends, but like. If you I see a bunch of girls you don't know, and they're just like. And they're like older and they're mean, then it's like. Yeah. That, yeah. Teenage girls are <laughs> like never teenage girls. boys never terrifying. At least not a pack of them. A pack of teenage girls that crap will terrify you. At least they if you're a teenage girl. Judgy eyes really. staring at yeah. you. If you're a teenage girl, it's very scary. Poor Mary, and she's not a leader. She's a follower. All right. Um. All right. Stand forth. This will be sufficient. Sit you down, children. Your friend Mary Warren has given up a dip. Us a deposition in which she swears that she never saw familiar spirits, apparitions, apparitions, nor any manifest of the devil. She claims as well that none of you have seen these things either. Now, children, this is a court of law. The law based upon the Bible and the Bible written by Almighty God forbid the practice of witchcraft and describes death as the penalty therefore. But likewise, children, the law and Bible damn all liars. And there is a false witness. Now then, it does not escape me that this deposition may be devised with blindness. It may well be that Mary Warren has been conquered by Satan and sends her here to distract us to take her purpose. If so, her neck will break for it. But if she speaks. <laughs> Can we just talk about her options here? Confront the girl that's terrifying or die. There's like no good option here. But if she speaks to I bid you now drop your guile and confess your treason. Their quick confession will go easier with you. Abigail Williams, rise. Is there any truth in this? And of course. So, Abby, this is your last chance. Just own it. Just own that you're lying. Yes. And this will be done. But of course, you can't do that. No, sir. Children, a very awkward bit will not be turned into your souls until your honesty is proved. Will either of you change your positions now or do you force me to hard questions? I have not to change, sir. She lies. You would still go on with this? Aye, sir. A palpette were discovered in Mr. Proctor's house. 
stabbed by a needle. Mary Warren claimed that you sat beside her in the court when she made it, and that you saw her make it. You witnessed how she herself stuck the needle into it for the sake of Jesus. What do you say to that? It is a lie, sir. While you worked for Mr. Proctor, did you see puppets in that house? Penny Proctor always kept puppets. <laughs> Your Honor, my wife never kept no poppets. Mary Warren confesses it was her poppet. Oh gosh, Your Excellency. Your Excellency. Mr. Chief. When I spoke with Cody Proctor in that house, she never said she kept, she said she never kept no poppets, but she did say that she did keep poppets when she were a girl. She has not been a girl these 15 years, Your Honor. But a poppet will keep 15 years, will it not? It will keep if it is kept. But Mary Warren swore she never saw no pops in my house nor anyone else. Why would, why could there not have been poppets hidden where no one ever saw them? There might also be two golden candlesticks in my house, but no one ever saw them. All right, really quick. Um, they changed the line here. So the version that I usually teach him, he says there could be a five-headed dragon in my house, but nobody's ever seen that. And I think that's a much more effective line here. Because it because these like <laughs> Proctor's like, okay, yeah, there there you know, there could be poppets somewhere in my house that nobody in my whole life has ever seen. There could also be a five-headed dragon. There could be a lot of things in my house. But he's like, there's not. So drop it. <laughs> All right, Proctor. We are here, Your Honor, precisely to discover what no one has ever seen. Mr. Danforth, what profit Mary Warren to turn herself about? What may she gain but hard questioning and worse? You are charging Abigail Williams with a marvelous cool plot to murder. Do you understand that? I do, sir. I believe she means to murder. This child has murdered your wife? It is not a child, sir. Now hear me, sir. In the sight of the congregation, she were twice this year put out of this meeting house first laughter during prayer what's this laughter during excellent <laughs> you deny it mr paris i do believe it happened once she is sometimes silly but she is so unknown solomon she goes to hang people Contemplation of murder. I, when it strikes hard upon me that she will laugh at prayer. Continue, Mr. Proctor. Mary, now tell the governor how you danced in the woods. Excellency, since I come to Salem, this man is blackening my name. He. In a moment, sir. What is this dancing? I, Mr. Proctor. Abigail leads the girls to the woods, Your Honor, and the dance. And they have danced their naked. <laughs> Your Honor, this. Mr. Paris discovered them in the dead of night. There's the child she is. Mr. Paris. I can only say, sir, that I've never found any of them naked in this manner. You're a liar, by the way. That is like the first thing we learned is that he saw some girl dancing naked in the woods. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You discovered them dancing in the woods, Abigail? Excellency, when I first arrived from Beverly, Mr. Paris told me that. Do you deny it, Mr. Paris? I do not, sir, but I have never saw any of them naked. But she has danced? Aye, sir. Excellency, will you permit, permit me? Pray, proceed. You say you never saw no spirits, Mary, or never threatened or afflicted by any manifest of the devil or the devil's agents? No, sir. And yet, when people accused of witchery confronted you in court, you would faint, saying their spirits came out of their bodies and choked you? That was pretense, sir. I cannot hear you. Pretense, sir. But you did turn cold, did you not? I myself picked you up many times, and your skin was icy. Mr. Danforth, you... I saw that many times. She only pretended to faint, Your Excellency. They're all marvelous pretenders. Then can she pretend to faint now? Now? Get out of here, Jake. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
She no. really wants to read today. Why not? <laughs> so when you have to read. Now there are no spirits attacking her, for none in this room is accused of witchcraft. So let her turn her herself cold now. Let her pretend that she attacked now. Let her faint. Faint. Faint? Hey, I faint. <laughs> so poor Mary Warren, who was like, who was the follower of the like stood up in the middle of the room, surrounded by a bunch of dudes and her like arch nemesis. They're like, faint, Mary Warren, faint. <laughs> like, poor girl can't do it. Like, she don't got the stomach for this. I faint. Prove to us how you pretended in this court so many times. I cannot faint now, sir. Can you not pretend it? I. I have no sense of it now. I... Why? What is lacking now? I cannot tell, sir. I... Cannot tell, sir. I... Might it be that here we have no afflicting spirit, but in the court there were some. I never saw no spirits. <laughs> then see the spirits now and prove to us that you can faint by your own will as you play. I cannot do it. Then you will confess, will you not? Attacking spirits made you no, made you to faint. I know, sir. I Your Excellency, this is a trick to blind the court. It's not a trick. I used to faint because I I thought I saw spirits. Thought you saw them. But I did not, Your Honor. How could you Wait, what happened the, with James' computer? I lost my page for a second. Oh, okay. Okay, no, you're fine. I just was like, oh god, do we need a break? Okay. So continue onward. How could you think you saw them unless you saw them? I I cannot tell you how, but I did. I I heard the other girl screaming, and you, Your Honor, you seem to believe them, and I it were only sport in the beginning, sir, but then the whole world cried spirits, spirits, and I, I promise you, Mr. Danforth, I only thought I saw them because I did not, but I did not. Surely your excellency is not taken by this simple lie. Abigail Williams, I bid you now search your heart. take life without cause. Is it possible, child, that the spirits you've seen are illusion only? Some deception that they cross your mind when... Why this? This is a base question, sir. Child, okay. I would have you consider it. I've been hurt, Mr. Danforth. I've seen my blood running out. I've been near... Well, I've been near to murdered every day because of, I've done my duty pointing out the devil's people. And this is my reward? To be mistrusted, denied, and questioned like a child. I do not mistrust you. Let you beware, Mr. Danforth. I think think you be so mighty that the power of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of hell may not turn your wits. Beware of it. There is... What is it, child? I, I know not a wind. A cold wind oh. has come. Okay, you're going to start up. Oh. <laughs> so you're gonna you're gonna start pretending to be cold. Oh, John, we're gonna get about halfway or two thirds way down the page, and there's gonna be a line in which you yell a very specific word. You may yell that word. It's allowed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <no. laughs> All right. Um. Continue onward. Abby. Mercy. Oh, Mercy Lewis. Um, oh, Mary, why do you send this shadow on me? I'll read it. No. No? Oh, <laughs> your honor, I freeze! There, you go. there we go. They're pretending. Hawthorne touches Abby's hand. She is cold, your honor. Touch her. Mercy rises, a threat. Mary, do you send this shadow on me? Lord, save me. <laughs> Abigail. I freeze. I freeze. Abby, don't do that. Mary Warren, do you wish her? I say to you, do you send your spirit out? Let me go, Mr. Proctor. I cannot. I cannot. Hey, man. Yeah, you can. Um, Abby. Oh, Heavenly Father, take away this shadow. Or, how do you... <laughs> you gotta say it with conviction, man! 
Now she'll suck and scream to stab me with, but... You will prove this. This will not pass. Mm -hmm. I have known her, sir. I have known her. You. You are a leecher? Fletcher. Fletcher. Mm -hmm. You're right. Oh, I'll read it. Give me a second. Oh, John, you cannot! No, Francis, it, it is true. It is true. She will deny it, but you will believe me, sir. A man. A man will not cast away his good name, sir. You surely know that. In what time? In what place? In what time and what place? In the proper place where my beasts are bedded. Eight months now, sir. It is eight months. She used to serve me in my house, sir. A man may think God sleeps, but God sees everything. I know it now. I beg you, sir, I beg you, see her what she is. My wife, my dear good wife, took this girl soon after, sir, and put her out of, out on the high road. And being what she is, a lump of vanity, sir. You're starting to cry here. Excellency, forgive, forgive me, forgive me. She thinks to dance with me on my wife's grave, and while she might, for I thought of her softly. God help me, I lusted. And there is a promise in such sweat. But it is a horde's vengeance, and you must see it. I set myself entirely in your hands. I know you must see it now. My wife is innocent, except she know a whore when she see one. You deny every scrap and title of this? Mm -hmm. If I must answer that, sir, I will leave, and I will not come back again. I love that Hale, this is not in the play, this line that Hale says, but I love that he says it. She does not deny it, Mr. Danforth. She does not deny it. You remain where you are. Sit you down. He looks at Abby, and then slowly turns to him. Mr. Parris, go into the court and bring the wife proctor out. Mr. Parris, and tell her not one word of what's been spoken here, and let him knock before you enter. Now we shall cut the bottom of the swamp. Your wife? you say, is an honest woman. In her life, sir, she have never lied. There are them that cannot sing and them that cannot weep. My wife cannot lie. Right. And when she put this girl out of your house, she put her out for a... Harlot. Harlot? Mm -hmm. Aye, sir. And knew her for a harlot? Mm -hmm. She knew her for a harlot. Good, then. And if she tell me, child, it were for a harlotry, then I would spread his mercy on you. Hold. Turn your back. Turn your back. You do likewise. Now let neither of you turn to the face of Lady Proctor. No one in this room is to speak one word or raise a gesture at a or nay. Enter. Mr. Cheever, report this testimony in all exactness. Are you ready? Okay. Ready, sir. Now, so imagine being Elizabeth Proctor. You come into the room. Your husband is there. You have no idea why you're there. Your husband is there. The girl he slept with eight months ago is there. Their backs are facing you, and the court is like, we have summoned you. That would be really intimidating, right? So she's she's going to kind of like crumble under the pressure, and you're going to see she's going to tell some, she's going to make a statement, right? So, uh, Dan Worth. Come here, woman. Look at me only, not at your husband, in my eyes only. Good, sir. <laughs> He pretended to understand that at one time you dismissed your servant, Abigail Logan. That is true, sir. <laughs> For what cause did you dismiss her? You will look in my eyes only and not at your husband. The answer is in your memory and you need no help to give it to me. Why did you dismiss Abigail Logan? She dissatisfied me. <laughs> she, dissatisfied. <laughs> she dissatisfied me and my husband. In what way dissatisfied you? She were. Woman, look at me. Were she. Slovenly. Slovenly, lazy. What disturbance did she cause? Your Honor, I in that time was 
I were sick, and my husband is a good and righteous man. He is never drunk, as some are, nor wasted his time at the shovel board, but always at his work. But in the, in my sickness, you see, sir, I were a long time sick after my last baby, and I thought I saw my husband somewhat turning from me. And this girl... Look at me. I, sir, Abigail Williams. What of Abigail Williams? I came to think he fancied her. And so one night I lost my wits, I think, and put her out on the high road. Your husband, did he indeed turn from you? My husband is a goodly man, sir. Then he did not turn from you. He... Look at me. To your own knowledge, has John Proctor ever committed the crime of Lechery. Lechery. Which is to lust after someone. Answer my question. Is your husband a lecher? No, sir. <laughs> Remove her. Elizabeth, tell the truth. Elizabeth. She has spoken. Remove her. Elizabeth, I have confessed it. Oh, John. <laughs> Not so weird. <laughs> <laughs> she only thought to say my name. Excellency, it is a natural lie to tell. I beg you, stop now, before another is condemned. I may shut my conscience to it no more. Private vengeance is working through this testimony. From the beginning, this man struck me true. I believe him now. By my oath to heaven, I believe him, and I pray you to call back his wife before we... I believe him. I cannot turn my face from it no more. This girl has always struck me false. She... Abigail, with a weird cry, screams at the ceiling. You will not. Be gone. Be gone, I say. Mercy and Susanna rise with her and look up as well. What is it, child? What's there? Child. Oh, sorry. Hold on. I need okay, to read this. So, what is it? So, but Abigail, playing with fear, is now raising up her frightened eyes. Her odd face towards the ceiling. The girls do the same. Now Hawthorne, Hale, Putnam, Cheever, and Danforth all do the same. What's there? He lowers his eyes from the ceiling and is now frightened, but with, there is real tension in his voice. Child. She is transfixed. With all the girls in complete silence, she is opened mouth, a gape at the ceiling, and in great fear. Girls, why do you? It's on the beam, behind the rafter. Danforth Where? looking up. Where? Why? Why do you come, yellow bird? Okay, this is gonna get crazy. It's a bird. Well, what is a bird? She's oh. she is pretending to see a bird. Abigail? Yes. A yellow bird. Okay. Um, Proctor, a tone of reason, firmly. Or is it bird? I see no bird. Let's see what else. Oh, sorry. My face. My face. Mr. Hale. Be quiet. Proctor to Hale. Do you see a bird? Be quiet. Abigail, to the ceiling, now in genuine conversation with the bird. <laughs> so trying to talk it out of attacking her. But God made my face. You cannot want to tear my face. Envy is a deadly sin. Mary? Mary? Mary. Mary. Abby. There we go. Uh, Abigail, unperturbed, continues talking to the bird. <laughs> Oh, Mary, this is a black art to change your shape. No, I cannot. I cannot stop my mouth. It's God's work I do here. Abby, I'm here. They're pretending, Mr. Danforth. Abby, she now takes a step backward as though the bird were, were going to swoop down momentarily. <laughs> oh, please, Mary, don't come down here. Her claws! She's stretching her claws! Lies, lies. Abigail, backing further, still fixed above. Mary, please don't hurt me. Mary, stand for it. I'm not hurting her. Why does she see this vision? You cannot believe them. Mary rises. She sees nothing. Abigail, as though hypnotized, mimics the exact tone of Mary's cries. She sees nothing. Abby, you mustn't. All right, ladies, can you help me out here? We're going to read all of the all-girls parts together. 
Okay, so I'll count down to three. But you gotta, you gotta stick with it, like, because it sounds really creepy if we commit. If we commit, okay. So, um, so Mary, can you repeat that last line? The Abby, you mustn't. Abby, you mustn't. One, two, three. Uh, Abby, you mustn't. <laughs> Very good. I'm here. I'm here. Stand for it. Mary Warren, draw back your spear out of them. You missed it. Yeah, you skipped the girls. Oh, ah! sorry. One, two. I'm, I'm here, here. I'm, I'm here. here. Oh, what the guy's playing the girl? Yeah. Who the heck is weird? Make it weird. <laughs> oh. Mary Warren, draw back your spirit out of them. Mr. Danforth. One, two, three. Mr. Danforth. Danforth. Have you compassion with the devil? Have you? Never, never. One, two, three. Never, never. never. Why can they only repeat you? Give me a whip, I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> They're sporting. One, two, three. They're sporting. Abby, stop it. One, two, three. Abby, stop it. Stop it. One, two, three. Stop it. Stop it. One, two, three. Stop it. Um. Okay. So Mary, utterly confounded and becoming overwhelmed by Abby and the girls' utter conviction, starts to whimper. Hands half raised, powerless, and all the girls begin whimpering exactly as she does. A little while ago, you were afflicted. Now it seems you afflict others. Where did you find this power? I, I have no power. One, two, three. I, I have, have no power. power. They're going, you, Mister. Why did you turn about this past two weeks? You have seen the devil, have you not? I. One, two, three. I. I. <laughs> Mary, Mary, God, all liars. <laughs> 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 you have seen the devil. You have made contact with Lucifer, have you not? Uh, <laughs> God, cuss word liar. <laughs> Mary. I cannot hear you. What do you say? Mary utters again unintelligibly. You will confess yourself or you will hang. He turns around to face him. Do you know who I am? I say you will hang if you do not open with me. Mary, remember the angel or Raphael? Do that which is good, and Abigail points upwards. The wings, her wings are spreading. Mary, please don't. Don't. She is going to come down. She's walking the beam. Look out. She's coming down. All scream. Abby dashes across the stage as though pursued by the bird. <laughs> Crying hysterically, the girls follow. All watchers struck, even horrified by this evident fit. Proctor, leaning across the table, turning her gently by the arm. Come here, baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the line! Stop the line! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> you have to say your line. No, I don't. Mary told the governor about me. Yeah, don't touch me. Don't oh. touch me. Mary. You Mary. are the devil's man. Praise <laughs> God. Mary, how? I'll not hang with you. I love God. I love God. Stand forth to Mary. He bid you do the devil's work? Mary, she's hysterical. She points at Proctor. He come at me by night and every day to sign. To sign. To sign what? The devil's book. He come with a book. Mary hysterically pointing at Proctor. My name. You want my name. I'll murder you, he says, if my wife hangs. We must go and overthrow the court, he says. Mr. Hale. Mary, he her sobbing begins. He wake me every night. His eyes were like coals and his fingers claw my neck. And I sign. I sign. Excellency, the child's gone wild. Mary, Mary. Mary screams at him. No, I love God. I go I go your way no more. Looks at Abby. I love God. I bless God. Sobbing, she runs to Abby. Abby, Abby, I'll never hurt you more. All watch as Abigail reaches out and draws the sobbing Mary to her and then looks at Danforth. What are you? You are combined with Antichrist, are you not? I've seen your power. Mr. will not deny it. All right, and then he's talking about John Proctor here. Okay? Hail. This is not witchcraft. These girls are fraud. You condemn an honest man. I will have nothing from you, Mr. Hale. Mr. Proctor. Will you confess yourself without the hell or do you keep that black allegiance yet? What say you? I say, God is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Paris crossing towards the door. 
hear it, hear it. A fire, a fire is burning. I hear the boot of Lucifer. I see his filthy face, and is my face in your Sanford. For them that coil to bring men out of ignorance, as I have coiled. And as you coil now one you know in all your black hearts that is, this is fraud. This is be fraud. God, all kind especially, and we'll, we will burn, we will burn together. Marshall, take him to court this time to I denounce these proceedings. I quit this court. Oh, hell no! All right, mm -hmm. Proctor. <laughs> you are pulling heaven down and raising up the war. Mr. Hale, Mr. Hale. And that's where we end. Whoa. <laughs> it gets insane. <laughs> like, this fight is wild. All right. Um, so, if you want, um, you are welcome to wrap up and close down. Just make sure you get your questions done by, by Wednesday, okay?